Well, in a previous video, we have discussed how to test the hypothesis about a population's proportion. Now we're going to discuss how to test the hypothesis about a population's mean. We're going to take a very similar approach. That is, we're going to create the null hypothesis dealing with equality. We're going to make a statement that, that the uh, assumed mean is a particular value and then we're going to use our sample information to create the samples mean and we're going to then compare see how close our sample mean is to our assumed mean if our sample mean is close to our assumed mean then the assumed mean is pretty good if our sample mean is significantly far away appropriately to the right or to the left of the sample mean, then that indicates that that assumed mean is not good. And we'll talk about the details on this video. Now, the specific example I'd like to do is one involving body temperature. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always been told that the average internal body temperature of a human is 98.6 degrees. A claim is, a claim has been made that, no, the average mean human body temperature is something less than 98.6 degrees. So, we're going to test that claim. And in order to test it, we will have a sample. And from that sample, we will calculate the sample mean. And we'll also calculate the sample standard deviation. Then we'll take a look at the formulas and see how we use that information to actually test the hypothesis to see if really the average human body temperature is less than 98.6 degrees. That's exactly what was done. Let me show you the information we have here. Here's the sample information. 106 humans were in the study, took their temperature, and it turned out that their mean average temperature was only 98.2 degrees instead of 98.6. And you may be thinking, wow, that's, that's not very much different than 98.6. How can we claim it's less? Well, isn't this less than 98.6? The question is, in order to support this claim, are we significantly lower than 98.6? When you first look at this, I'd say, well, it sure doesn't look like we're significantly less. But again, we can't just go by looks. We need to actually do the math. The standard deviation was found to be 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how much variation there was in the temperature to the 106 humans in the, uh, in the study. So I want to know. Do the results, does the result, probably should be do the results, support this claim. And we're going to use a significance level of 5%. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. All right, how do we start? Well, we start by drawing a picture and we say assume, we kind of play devil's advocate, and we assume that the 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is correct. So we draw a picture with 98.6 degrees right as the mean, right in the middle. So what we have here is a distribution of all the different samples we could have gotten where we had tested 106. Um, if this is correct, we would expect most of the samples we'd go out and collect to be something right around 98.6 degrees. However, we got a sample that's over here at 98 degrees. 0.2 degrees. That was our sample. This distribution represents all the different possible samples that, that could have occurred. It's possible you could have taken the temperature of 106 people and their average temperature was 100 degrees. Possible. It's possible we could have had 106 people and the average temperature for them was maybe clear down here at 97. Possible. Likely. No, what's likely? If 98.6 is actually correct, it's likely 
that we'll get something right around 98.6. The question is, are we significantly far enough to the left below 98.6 to reject the statement right here that 98.6 degrees is actually the average temperature. If we can reject this statement, then we can therefore say, well, if it's not 98.6, then it must be less than 98.6. Okay. Now, let's talk about the significance level. A 5% or 0 0.05 significance level means that in order to de reject 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, our sample mean must have a less than 5% chance of occurring. If this is really the right number, this 98.6, then our sample has to be so far away to the left that it only has a 5% chance of occurring. And again, you can't just tell by looking at my picture. We have to do the math. How do we know if it's far enough away? Well, that's our next step. We have to find the critical value. We have to figure out how many standard deviations do we have to be away to the left so that this is less than 5% chance of occurring. And we do that by using the t-table. When we're dealing with means and we don't know the population's standard deviation, we must use the t distribution. And we are talking about information to the left of the mean, of the assumed mean. So this is a left-tailed test. And if you look at the table, let me show you the table here. I know you probably can't read these yet until I zoom in on them. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom a little bit here. All of these values are positive, but please understand these are the positive values when we're dealing with a right-tailed test on the right side. Since they're dealing with the left-tailed test, because our sample came out on the left, then we can accommodate that by just looking up the number in here and just putting a minus sign in front of it. Make it negative. So let's find it. Okay, once again, t, the t values are based on two things. The degrees of freedom, which is one value less than the number of members in the, in the study, N was 106, so one less than that is 105. Well, I don't have 105 here, but I've got 100. So we'll be using this hundredth line. Secondly, the second thing that's important is are we talking about a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test? Well, we're only talking about a left-tailed test, so we're going to use the headings in this upper heading. So here's my significance level of 5%. So bringing this down and bringing this across, where's my 100? I've got a long way to go. There's 100 and here's my column. I get 1.660. Okay, 1.660 and you should have your own t-table in front of you so you can read these two. So my critical value t is 1.660 but because we're on the left side this is negative. So what we're saying, let me zoom back out, we have to find how many standard deviations this 98.2 is away from 98.6 and we will be able to support the claim if we're further away than this many standard deviations and since it's negative that means to the left okay so anything here to the left of this will be good we just have to find out what the what the number of standard deviations is. So in the next video, we'll actually do that. We're about out of time on this one. Next video, let's actually calculate how many standard deviations this value is from what we're assuming to be true.